I want to return to a story from earlier this week. And it was the one involving Prince Harry losing a court ruling for paying for police protection while in the UK. It's important to remember that this is one of two cases that Harry has brought against the Home Office. The first being that he should be allowed to challenge the original ruling made to remove his security. And the decision made by a judge on Tuesday was in regards to Prince Harry offering to pay for police security while in the UK. He can no longer seek further judicial review on that one. Let me read you this paragraph and show you where we are going. Quote, the decision to remove publicly funded security was taken by the Executive Committee for the Protection of Royalty and Public Figures, known by the acronym RAVEC, which approves security for the royals and VIPs such as the Prime Minister, end quote. The decision to remove the public funding for security for Prince Harry and his family was made by that committee. Let's talk a little bit about RAVEC. It is not easy to find information about the committee, especially who sits on the committee which kind of seems like an important thing to know, especially when all these parties are so intertwined. This is from Newsweek, May 23rd, 2023. It states, quote, through the court process, it became apparent that some of the Queen's staff, including Sir Edward Young, had sat on the Royal and VIP Executive Committee, RAVEC, which made the call to end his publicly funded security, end quote. Harry's attorney, Shahid Fatima, told London's High Court in July that, quote, Harry should have been informed of Young's role because of the background of tension between them, end quote. Quote, a court filing by Harry's legal team said Young and other royal staff did not tell the police and the Home Office that Harry had offered to fund the police security team himself, end quote. Remember the media rage around that? Harry expects publicly funded security now that he's not going to be a working royal. And the larger point they're making is that Prince Harry should have been given a clear and full explanation of who sat on RAVAC and the appropriateness of some people making these decisions. Let's go briefly back to Spare by Prince Harry. Reminder, the security was pulled for Harry and his family way before Spare came out. So this is not in retaliation for Spare. Sir Edward Young, who was the former private secretary to the late Queen Elizabeth, was referred to as the bee in Prince Harry's book. Harry writes that, quote, the bee was oval-faced and fuzzy and tended to glide around with great equanimity and poise as if he was boon to all. He was so poised that people didn't fear him. Big mistake, sometimes their last mistake. Sir Edward was heavily criticized for not finding a role for Meghan and also from Harry's point of view, influencing the queen in her decision to not accept a half in, half out, working royal situation for him and Meghan. This is a Tadler article from January 2020 around the time that Harry and Meghan's decision to step away as working royals was announced. It's Tatler, take it with a massive grain of salt. But allegedly, Princess Anne and Prince Edward were amongst those calling for Queen's private secretary to be sacked. Interesting that that rumor even made it out into the papers. Sir Edward Young, someone with obvious tensions and a past with Harry and Meghan was helping to make decisions about what kind of security they deserved or perhaps even present the idea of them paying for it. I also want to touch on another character from Prince Harry's book, and that is Clive Alderman, the private secretary to then Prince Charles, now King Charles. Clive Alderman is responsible for the phrase, recollections may vary. You can thank Clive for that one. In Spare, he is referred to as the Wasp. Harry describes Clive as good at pretending to be polite. He claims that it was easy to misjudge Clive because of his appearance, but that if you pushed back on anything, you would be on the list. Quote, a short time later without warning, he'd give you such a stab with his outside stinger that you'd cry in confusion. Where the F did that come from? End quote. I bring up Clive because I think I found the only instance where I could feasibly conceive of who is on Ravek. It's from the press reader and it appeared in the Sunday Telegraph on October 16th, 2022. I've looked for the original source in the Sunday Telegraph. I cannot find it anywhere. So I do wonder if it has been deleted. Still looking into that. It's titled, Ravek revealed membership of committee in charge of Sussex's protective security is made public. It says, quote, the King and the Prince of Wales's closest aides will play a central role in future decisions about the Sussex's security. 
It is expected that Sir Clive Alderton, the King's private secretary, will replace Sir Edward Young, Queen Elizabeth II's private secretary, on Ravec, end quote. My guess is that any time a sovereign passes away, the private secretary or someone high up for the incoming monarch serves on Ravec. Just a guess. It also says that a senior aide to Prince William will replace another member of the board. I'm going to look more into this. I don't want the Sunday Telegraph to be my only source, but there is not a lot of information out there. A few more quotes and we'll wrap up. The article says that typically the membership of Ravec is shrouded in secrecy. It's made up of 10 members. That's the first time I've seen an actual count of how many people are on this committee. The chairman is understood, understood, we don't know for sure, understood to be Sir Richard Mottram, a former permanent secretary in the cabinet office. I probably should look into him because it seems like everyone knows everyone, so probably worthwhile. So it's a chairman three senior members from the royal household, the chairman of the National Police Chiefs Council for Counterterrorism Coordination Committee, so many words, the deputy assistant commissioner of specialist operations at the Met Police, and then other people that are a part of the Metropolitan Police. I can understand to an extent why you would want some secrecy. You're making very big decisions for very important people. On the other hand, I think that if you were someone who has relationships with people of the committee, you should be allowed to know who's on it and perhaps make the case for why they should excuse themselves from this situation. Bring someone more neutral in. Because from what we know, which is very little, Sir Edward Young was on the committee and then was replaced with Clive Alderman two people that were instrumental in making the decision for Harry and Meghan to either be all in or all out. No half and half, no in between. And it's hard not to see some of these decisions that have been made about his ability to pay for police security as, I don't know if I want to say revenge, but kind of a, well, you want it out. It just seems like an independent group should be brought in to analyze how and why these decisions were made. But yeah, it's something. Stay tuned for more.